Radio Frequency Identification, RFID for short, is an automatic identification method that relies on storing and remotely retrieving data using devices called RFID tags or transponders. It's a technology with roots in the early 20th century and is rapidly changing the way the world works, travels, practices medicine, and so much more. IEEE sponsored a conference this spring in conjunction with RFID World, an annual big tent event that drew some 200 exhibitors from around the world to show off examples of this technology. Exhibit organizer Bill Allen welcomed IEEE to this exciting arena. We wanted to bring in IEEE to the show to uh, open it up to uh, a wider audience. And uh, after all, a lot of the members of IEEE do all the design work for RFID technologies and solutions. IEEE, the largest engineering association in the world, organized seminars and presentations designed to bring the latest research and practice to practitioners in the field. The purpose of this conference was to bring together academics, people from industry, people from government from all sorts of uh, areas to talk about the issues that are there in RFID, not just uh, in sort of a supervision, uh, superficial or marketing way, but in a detailed and scientific way, and to begin to really talk about what are the technical issues that are there in this technology. Just like RFID is an enabling technology, this conference is enabling a lot of dialogue to go on be among the engineers and the scientists of the world regarding RFID to find new areas that have to be explored to help build an infrastructure both academically and in the industries and share those kinds of resources. Not that they aren't already there, but it's just another uh, layer for connecting that's really important. We heard a lot of talk at this conference about uh, establishing IEEE standards, for example, and RFID, there are a few, but now we have uh, people talking to each other and saying, okay, I'm going to do this, I want to do this, and it's an exciting time for that. The conference drew IEEE members and others interested in exploring some of the challenges and possibilities that lie ahead in this promising field. Take, for example, RFID. Even though the core of what we do is electrical engineering, we have to deal with many different industries from healthcare to electronic payments uh, to uh, library books and tracking, animals tracking, as well as automobile and mobilization. So you can start to, to move towards your affinity, combining the engineering with any particular industry that you feel strongly about or have some creative ideas on how to solve their problems better than the competition. And that makes engineering a fabulous career. There's also some uh, great excitement here because uh, we're going to provide a lot of uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs. We promote entrepreneurs in IEEE USA. The RFID work in the retail industry, which um, by some is not considered as you know, a technology um, a first mover. Um, means that a lot of people are thinking about RFID right now in their own closed loop applications. Um, and that's not in retail, that's manufacturing, that's aerospace, that's healthcare. And really I think the, the, the kickoff in, in, in retail, which might have slowed down a little bit and is going a bit slower than people thought, um, has really sort of spread into other industries. And really right now you see a lot of very successful RFID projects um, in closed loop applications for asset tracking in the automobile industry. And I think that will, that will just drive the industry forward. The Department of Defense is using RFID for logistics and supply chain. The Department of State has adopted electronic passports with its rollout last year and has joined over 40 other countries that use RFID to prevent fraud of identification and help protect their citizens. What RFID is doing today is revolutionizing the industry and that people can actually have hands-off data capture. And with hands-off data capture, you don't need as much inventory, processes move faster. Inventory has to be actively managed. And so our primary focus in healthcare are smart shelves in hospitals for managing visibility of uh, medical devices. A lot of issues with billing, a lot of issues with uh, loss and shrinkage, which can be addressed with Ruby. Uh, we have now real-time, online, web-enabled uh, packages that tell you everything that's on a shelf, uh, when it was taken off, when it was put on, all the events, chain of possession, everything. So we provide not just the ability to see everything and understand where it is, 
but also to manage the inventory down. I think ultimately what you're seeing is a lot of initiatives toward an electronic patient record. And I, the second, sort of the other shoe to drop there is the linking of that record to a particular individual in a very precise fashion. And that's another area where RFID could, be, could play. Technical sessions covered the basics, from antennas to location systems, security issues to component design to healthcare applications. A lunch panel discussed RFID for fly-by wireless, using sensor tags in aerospace vehicles to eliminate wires. Other sessions addressed the need for global standards and other policy issues. This is what some attendees had to say. RFID is a technology that uses a backscattered mode of transmission. So the tag is like a mirror, and the base station sends a signal out, and the tag bounces the signal back. So what you have in the, in the RFID tag label, you have uh, an integrated circuit. That integrated circuit has no batteries, has uh, no power to it. The integrated circuit then has an antenna that's connected to it. You then have an external uh, antenna reader, whether it's a fixed or a portable unit, that transmits RF energy to that chip. It excites the chip and the chip is able then to be energized and transmit back the information that it contains. One of the great things that passive RFID is able to do is uh, receive a signal without actually having to have any onboard battery power. And that is extremely helpful if you've got an environmental sensor where you don't necessarily want it running all the time. You don't want it constantly transmitting data because perhaps its battery capacity is limited. As with any technology, it's important to explore the effects it may have on society. And there were many conference attendees who focused on this aspect. Probably the most provocative aspect of RFID today is that within 10 years there will be more RFID readers and there will be computer servers in the world. And that's really a, a, a tremendous change that we'll see. If you can imagine how many computer servers there are running websites and corporations and even some people's personal home networks in the world, think about the fact that you'll have RFID sensors throughout the world that will allow people to uh, more easily get through traffic, that will allow them to shop uh, more effectively, that allow businesses to keep, compete more effectively worldwide and to reduce cost and to improve efficiency so that people can get things at a lower cost, uh, with higher quality and get them faster than they ever have before. It's certainly difficult to try and separate policy from technology and in a lot of cases you can't. Uh, sometimes it's it's important to consider the policy implications in anything that you do. And I don't think enough engineers actually do that. And that's actually why this conference, IEEE RFID 2007, is really interesting in that it has embraced the idea of people looking at the, the business applications of, technology, of technological devices and the potential security and policy aspects. Other attendees address the issue of education and the future of RFID. Education is critical to the adoption and the advancement of RFID technologies and really any wireless technologies. We need to better understand this technology. If we don't understand it, even at the minute details and the subtleties of this technology, then we're not going to be able to make those advances. We're not going to be able to make those breakthroughs in either moving the technology forward or using this technology in a new application. I kind of think that if you can't uh, explain a technology uh, in English uh, in a way that, uh, that a lay person can understand what's happening. You don't understand the technology yourself. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, it's important to develop this, uh, this approach. I can see the, 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 um, the point three years from now or five years from now where uh, devices and products will be able to talk to each other through mesh networking and through Wi-Fi and Zigbee networks, and this is where IEEE comes in. I, I, IEEE is the standard bearer. Meanwhile, back at the exhibit, Anne Gracken from Chainlink Research was on the floor to talk with manufacturers about current applications. The possibilities are seemingly endless. I think we should look at some of the interesting players that are at the conference today who are doing neat things that actually solve business problems for people. There's some good inventors here and lots of interesting stuff to look at. RFID uh, tags are attached to items that are moving around inside a warehouse or on people or assets that are moving. Uh, in order to keep track of this, uh, there are readers that are installed uh, in a warehouse or an office area where people are moving around. And 
this data about the tags or the individual passing in front of these readers uh, has no context. Okay, it just it just passed in front of the reader. So it could mean different things. Somebody is stealing an item. Somebody is uh, opening a door, wanting to be opening a door. All those things are only deciphered with some context behind it. Okay, so that's there needs to be software that really takes the data and kind of creates uh, some kind of context around it. The cow kind of represents our beginnings in the RFID space. We began with livestock tagging back in 1989. Another application you can see the guys maybe national car rental. Wearing these, when you return your rental car, right. they scan the uh, barcode on the car, and that would print out your receipt. We've got a RFID encoder, verifier, printer, applicator. All right. So with this, you're able to encode, like for instance, like an EPC tag. Right. In this case, on an Avery inlay, we also do label conversion. I don't know if you can pick up that. You can see the RFID tag embedded inside the label. Think of this as a pallet. Right. This has an SSCC 96 sales order right. with line items in it. Right. So therefore, this is a sensor, so that, that knows somebody's coming through it to turn the readers on. Okay. So if I break the sensor, it goes through, it scans. It looks at the sales order, it looks in the database, and it says, oh, you shipped everything completely. Right. Now, let's just say if I short ship it, then now I come through it, I break through, I go through, it looks at it, looks in the database, it's red, red light. light, something wrong, uh oh, you didn't ship the nines. It's clear that the wave of the future is in RFID technology. Like the internet did in the early 90s, RFID is going to drastically change the world. Bill Allen said it best. The thing about RFID technology is that it stretches across so many different markets above and beyond what barcodes are capable of doing. Uh, and, and the future is certainly very, very bright for RFID. And uh, the talk right now is what it's uh, by an Information Week editor, he called it the, the number one disruptive technology to watch over the next few years. The growth of the RFID industry depends on the development of technical standards for quality and consistency. What role will you play in the RFID revolution? For more information, contact IEEE.